So this is the day we wrap it up, guys. Today, I'm going to be showing you two messages, two new messages with you. The first one is uh, making a move and the second one would have to be rematch. So by the end of this episode, we should have everything we need to have a full chess game. So as you can see here, beginning is fine. We're going to do the fool's mate. And here we go. Every time, by the way, I haven't said that, but um, every move has been working quite well, including the special move. And then on top of that, at the end, we've changed the name of the buttons for rematch and menu, because when you click on rematch, this shows up on the other player screen and it says opponent wants a rematch. Then you can go ahead and the game still works as uh, as it is intended. So that's fairly cool. Every box has every bug that I could find has been fixed. And not only that, we've done another small tweak in which if we decide to go back to the menu, we can see opponent has left and here the rematch button is also covered and you can't click on it. So really happy about this one. I hope you guys enjoy. We are wrapping it up today. I know it's a big episode once more, but uh, by the end of this one, we should be done. Cheers, guys. See you there. Okay, so the video today will be split in two parts. The first part about replicating a move being done in multiplayer, and the second part about doing a rematch. The rematch is going to have a little bit of UI in it as well. We're going to start off by creating our message, by creating our new net message, and that net message will be, of course, the, um, did we call it make move? I believe it was make move. So net make move. We're going to go inside of it, and as we like to do, we're just going to copy over stuff so we can be a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to be taking any of the net message I currently have, just copy pasting it in here, and we will change that for net make move, inherit from net message. Make sure we change the name of the constructor. Make sure we change the operation code as well, very important. So this stays the same. The serialize will change eventually, but now we're just gonna col uh, collapse it. Received on client will change for the good event being called. So C make move and S make move. All right. So this message will carry on the information every time you do a move, which will require um, two pieces of information. One, what is the um, position of the piece that is being moved initially and where is it going? That's the only information we need. And also the team in there, yeah. So here are my field. I'm going to copy them over. Original X will be for the original position. Y, same thing, X and then Y. I'm not doing a vector to in here. And it's very important, and I should have said that a little bit earlier, but when you make a... Um, when you make a message that needs to be carried on over to the internet through the, the, the socket, through the box, right? You want to be using very basic types unless you have a way to serialize those types. So for example here, if I was to um, go down in the serialize and I had a vector 2 up here, I would be trying to somehow make it fit inside of a float and then I'd have to write another float and then another float. So I'd have to write 3 float, for example, for a vector 3. Uh, there is no right vector 2 in here. So unless you make that on your own, um, then just try and use really basic types. But you can actually do that, right? So you could you could make an extension of this class and allow you to write a certain amount of bits or, or byte for a very specific type. Uh, just know that when you do that, you'll also have to do it on the other side as well. So in the reader as well. That being said, we have a couple of int to write. First, the original x, then the original y that is the two first one we write followed by the destination x and also destination y i'm just gonna make sure my face is not in the way and finally we have the team id as well so team id if you guys remember when we write them in a certain fashion we also have to deserialize them in the same fashion so here in the deserialize we're going to start with original x and say reader read int Copy that couple of time, that's original Y, destination X, destination Y, and finally team ID. Those are all int, so I don't need to change the type over here. Okay, and our message is it's pretty much done already, right? So that's all we have to do for the make move message. Now it's time to hook this up inside of the game. We now have to hook this new message somewhere in our code. So going back on the chessboard, I'm going to be having a look at the function called move to. So this function down here, roughly at line 560, 
Um, this function, the way it used to work before is that we have a chess piece and then we went, uh, we went, we mentioned where it should go, right? So this is a destination and the CP would contain the origin. What I would like to do at this point is since we are rewriting this game to be always multiplayer, even if we're playing a local game, I want it to be using always multiplayer code. And um, the way our message is made, so the way the net message is made here, we don't have a reference to a chess piece. Instead, we have a reference to the original X and Y in which we can use that to find a chess piece. So I'm going to rewrite the signature of this to match what the messages need. So what I'll do is I'll remove that and I'll say original X, original Y. So we're adding a new int parameter and then the, the destination is, is going to be X and then Y. Um, and also here, we're going to have to go back through the function and also fix a couple of things like here, previous position, instead of being current X, we just use original X and current Y, we just use original, original Y. Did I? Yeah, I wrote that wrong. That's why. There we go. But throughout this function, we have things such as we have to check for the team and we also have to assign the piece. Uh, at a couple of places. So we're going to come back and say chess piece CP is going to be equal to chess pieces at original X and original Y. So we still have our CP parameter though it is inside of here instead. Um, and one more thing I'd like to do is this contain valid move. I actually like to move it outside of this function and instead we're going to put it where um, we drag and drop or not drag and drop but we drag the pieces around. So I'm going to cut this from the move to function, go to where I actually call move to. So roughly around here. So this is inside of the update function and above that, maybe above uh, here, I'm going to call this function. And I'm just going to reorder this piece of code quite a lot here. So have a look at that. So we are going to, we're going to keep this statement here at the top. So when we're currently dragging and we're releasing the mouse button, but then on top of that, I will say if we contain a valid move instead of returning. And by the way, if it's we contain a valid move and not if we don't at the hit position dot X and hit position dot Y, that's what we're testing here. Then we're going to be opening up the bracket and we'll put uh, the, the, the move to function in there. Do also know that this move to returns a Boolean, though I don't plan on using it anymore. So I'll just remove the Boolean, put it up here and just call the move function in case we have the, the special move. So what we've done right here is we removed the Boolean. Why? Well, because earlier we were going to say, if we are allowed to do a valid move, then do the move to, but if we're not just return as false. But the truth is, uh, it was kind of irrelevant to have that in there because the move to remember the line we had, the only line we had where we could return, return null was at the top over here. So right at the beginning of the function, we had a way to exit if it didn't work. So instead of putting it right at the beginning here, since I want this to be um, to be working when this, I want this to be working 100% of the time when somebody else calls it through the multiplayer uh, message, uh, I want to have the, the condition being put outside of that. So I don't want to have the condition in there in case, for example, um, the other player makes a move and then we enter the move to function and then just here it says return false and then it exits. Then both clients are going to be desynchronized because the first one will have a valid move. That's why he did the move to, but the second one won't. And then we're just, we're just in a mess. And actually, you know what? Prove, to prove the point even further, I'm going to put that under a void. And this statement over here, we don't need anymore. We're just going to do a normal return. And at the end, same thing, normal return. So going back in my update statement where we were refactoring this piece of code here when we release the mouse button, um, first, I'd like to make sure that when I contain a valid move and I'm releasing, I want to do the move to. The move to, however, does no, no longer takes in the currently dragging piece. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to use this previous position here. Um, and I'll move that up like so, because we'll need it as well if we are to release that piece and it doesn't work. So previous position dot X and previous position dot Y. Now our move to function should be called. And here is where we'll have net implementation. 
But we also have to for, uh, not forget that we had statement in case it didn't work here. So in my else statement, I'm going to be taking this, currently dragging, um, hmm, set position, and what else? We also need to have the currently dragging null, put all of that roughly around here, and call it a day. We could also have a return statement here, I believe, in case we exit, but I don't think we can actually exit out of that, can we? Yes, yeah, so if we don't exit, we are going to be running this code, but then currently dragging is null, so we could actually remove the return. So at this point, move to should only be called if we contain valid move. And uh, if we don't, then we go back to resetting things as we were earlier. So if we have a valid move and we are the one doing it, right? Because this, this is client sided, this use input that get button. So it, it's something that is uh, launched by the client only. If this happens, we need to create a new message. And now we've, I don't think we've done that. Well, yeah, we've done that with assign team, but um, let, let's do another example of, on how we create a message. So make move is going to be equal to a new message. This one, we're going to assign the original X to previous position dot X. You got it. Previous position dot Y. And the destination is going to be hit position. So going back here, the destination X and the destination y is going to be equal to hit position dot x and then hit position dot y. So x y x y. Make sure we are totally fine here. And then finally, we also have to assign the team ID, and that's going to be equal to the current team. At this point, our message is ready. We just have to send it. So client instance send to server with the message. Okay, and with that. We now have a message being sent over to the server. Now it's time for the server to grab that message and uh, broadcast it to the other person. So as we done earlier, when we want to listen for a message, we're going to be registering ourselves to its events, um, which means we're going to go down to register event at the very bottom of our very long script now. And it should be somewhere around here. So yeah, here it is. Register event, we're going to say, since it's a uh, message for the server, it's s make move, and we do plus equal on make move server. I'm going to be copying this one over, and where it says on the welcome server, I'll just copy this whole thing and call it on make move server. Is going to be in that message. Yes, connection is going to be connection as well, and here is what we'll do. So we receive the message and our goal here is to broadcast it back. So we've done that in the past. We know how easy it is. Receive and just broadcast it back. We do it by um, actually just calling the server.instance broadcast message. We could do it this way, uh, but to give you a little bit more leeway, what I like to do, what I've done in my other piece of code is this. So I just I got the same message, I um, cast it in what the type is, so the real type is that. And here, if you want, you could do some validation, some checks, just to make sure the person is not hacking or something like that. Um, I'm just going to give you an empty space to do that here, but of course, will not take care of that on my side, simply because if the person is smart enough to do memory editing to hack chess, maybe he shouldn't be playing chess. But uh, the option is here, that's where you would do it. Okay. Um, now, what this will do is we will receive the message on the server, and at this point, we're sending it back, but this time to all the clients. So going back to my register events, also, by the way, if, if we're doing something in register event, I always forget to do it, but we also have to do that in on register event and just add the minus sign. Uh, that being said, let's go back, say net utility, C, make move, because now we're receiving the message as well. And we want to do on make move client. Copy this line over, post it down there. There we go. So same thing as the last time. We're going to head over to the server and do. Um, I'm just going to copy this one over. Yep. On make move client. Rename that for message. 
since I'm here, I'm also going to rename that for message. What was it? Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, the code inside of here is going to be a little bit more complex. So when we receive that message um, that somebody has made a move, we now have to replicate that very specific move. So first, I'm going to grab the reference net make move mm is equal to the message cast as the proper type. So net make move. Now I can have the information inside of it. And just to make sure, I'm going to do a debug.log here. I'll just copy the one I have over on the other screen. Uh, it's a debug.log that says make move. Which team has made the move? What was the original position going into the destination as well? So I can just have a look in my console and see if things are, are proper a little bit later on. Um, and our goal over here will be to check if this is our team. If it's not our team, then we're going to replicate with the move to function. Now, uh, you might be asking, why am I not doing it in the authoritative manner? So why am I not just not moving the player at all, just doing a request to move when I'm on the client side and then letting everybody move on this function here. So when, when we broadcast this message and we receive on make move client, why am I not waiting until this point to do the move to function? The, the, the simple answer is because of the delay. So if I want things to be on the client side, if I want things to look smooth, I'm going to make the move on the client side first and I'll just have the other person replicate the move. If you wanted to make something that is extremely sec secure and you could say non-hackable, assuming that you have valid um, validation checks in here, you could technically in my update function where I release the piece, you could say that you don't move the piece over there, but instead you're going to move it when you receive the on make move client message. But in this case, I don't do that. I want, I want to make sure that it's smooth on both sides. So I'm going to say this instead. If the message I receive, if the team ID is not equal to my team, then only then will I move the piece and we'll do it like that. So quite a couple of line of code here. We, we can't just do move to because if we were to do move to, and I'll show you because we have to write this line anyway, uh, original X, original Y, destination X, and then destination Y. If I was to just do this, I would enter some conflict with special move. Why? Well, because when we parse the function, when we do move to usually, so roughly around here, uh, before we do that, we filled in a list of available move and a list of special move. If we don't have these, so if we don't have the, the, the specific available move and we don't have the special move, in case the other person does something that involves a special move, we're not going to have the same effect on our end. So it's very important that before we actually run this, we run the possibilities of what will happen on the other side. So we're going to say available move is equal to, hmm, I need to have a target here. So here, chess piece target is equal to chess pieces at the index, oops, chess pieces at the index mm original x. And do note the, the simulation here is not going to be that expensive because we're just running it on a single piece, the piece that is the, the target in this case. We're going to say available move is equal to target dot get available move with, of course, the reference board, the tile count. And we've got it. So what's up with this one? Oh, well, let's use the constant field instead. Uh, but not only that, the available move is fine. But then what was important here was the special move. So special move is going to be equal to target, get special move, reference with the chess piece, reference with the move list, and reference with the available moves. Okay, a lot of code. It is now time to finally test it out. So we're going to go ahead, launch a build. All right, so we're connecting. Um, this is a white side. No bug as before. That's good. And then we're going to make our first move and drop and it doesn't work. Okay, crap. So what's what's going on here? So one of the problem we got for sure is over here. Um, in the net utility. So in the net utility, we didn't uncomment the make move. So therefore our message was not being unpacked properly. And I don't know why we didn't see this, but hey, my bad. So I'm going to go back, give it a try only in the local game just for the moment. And let's see. Now I just can't release this. 
but I'm receiving the messages down here, so I'm making all of these big messages whenever I I, I drag, but uh, it's not it's not going to be enough, so uh, we're going to have to fix that dragging mechanic issue. All right, so I found a problem, and the problem is a simple one. I'm just having a little bit of issue um, thinking about where would be the cleanest place to put these two pieces of code. So roughly over here, currently dragging is equal to null, and then um, remove highlight tiles. We have to remove that reference. We also have to make sure we remove the tiles. Um, and I'm wondering if I should just do it down here or I should do it inside of the move to function. So I'll initially try this one out at this very specific spot. Uh, and if it doesn't work, I'll just move it to the move to function where we could just do a big cleanup. It just depends because hmm, as, as the other person, as the other client, I, I wonder if that's going to leave a trace is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if the other person does it. But this seems to be fine at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and try this out in multiplayer. And I will leave the console running this time as well so I can have a look down there. Uh, let's host. Join. And let's have a look here. As I move this piece, it's being replicated on this side, which is great. Uh, and what's in the console? So make move from team 0, from 4-1. Two, four, three, and as you can see, my problem that I had is right there. So the tiles are still highlighted, and that's not what I want. Um, so I got to make sure this doesn't happen, and it's really, really annoying. It seems to be happening. Wait, how actually did it happen? It doesn't happen anymore. Either way, so I saw that problem happen once. So um, I'm going to be taking these two lines of code over here, and I'm going to go inside of the move to function, and at the bottom, roughly after process special move, I'm going to input them in there and just to make sure I don't do anything stupid currently dragging is going to be equal to null only if it is equal to something and with that done I think I'm going to be good to go at this point um let's move the move is being done I'm not seeing any weird highlighting mechanic and it's being reflected by the way here's my turn I can't do anything I can't move anything because it's not my turn and then on this side can't move the black side, but I can move this one. Oh, and I just realized that. <laughs> huh. Okay, that's some new bugs right here. Well, we're gonna have to go ahead and fix that. So the first step of fixing a bug would be to figure out how it happened. So I can drag somewhere else, that's totally fine. But if I drag my piece on top of here, or anywhere that I cannot go, then I run into a problem where everything now becomes out of sync and that's not cool so yeah definitely not cool so we found the problem the problem has to do with um, when I release and it's not a valid move oh wait it's me I'm being stupid uh, I actually moved the <laughs> I actually removed the function down here I don't know why I removed those my bad this is this is completely a mess <laughs> sorry about that Okay, that, that should now work. We saw that the make move mechanic did work as well. What we're going to go into in the second part of this video would be the rematch mechanic. So let me just test this out again. Yeah, okay, fix. That's good. All right, so quick test before we wrap this one up. We are going to be boo -boo -boo connecting. Let's see. We make this move. That move go back on this side and everything seems to be working just good so killing a unit is also there um, one thing that we could be testing out would be um, a special move because that's a condition that is a little bit outside of the normal so let's do a special move being reflected perfectly on both sides so that's amazing we've got our make move last thing we'd like to do for this episode would be the rematch mechanic um, yeah, we're going to wrap this up in, in, in this episode. So the rematch mechanic is going to be a new message again. So a net rematch in this case. And the content of this message will simply be which team is asking for rematch. So I'm going to be going ahead, taking any message I currently have, pasting it in here. And as always, net rematch is going to be the message name. And I'm going to keep the team ID in there. So that's the only one I care about. Changing, of course, the constructor name, changing the operation code, and this time around, I'm not going to forget about it, I'm going to go uncommented from the net utility. There we go, that's a very good job. <laughs> Congratulations, Michael. Okay, 
Uh, serialize, we only want to serialize the team ID and deserialize, we only want to deserialize that team ID. Of course, we're going to go down here as well, change it to C rematch and S rematch. Just like this, we have our message and we just have to find a way um, where to implement it properly. Oh, actually, you know what? We'll do one more thing just to, to make this a little bit more polish. Uh, what I'll do is I'll add another byte actually in there called want mm, want rematch as in you would like to rematch or not because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give an option for the player to say no well to exit basically and that will let the other player know if he wants a rematch or if he exit and he doesn't want to play again so one last thing go back here we're writing a byte this time I want to say a boolean, but uh, there's no boolean in there, so instead we're going to do a byte, and that byte's going to be 0 or 1, 1 being of course positive, and uh, anything else being negative. Cool. So rematch, read byte, and I think my face is in the way, so sorry about that. There we go. So with this net message, um, net rematch message, we are going to go inside of the chessboard, and uh, in the chessboard, there is, I believe, a victory screen right here, and we'll take advantage of that victory screen by um, adding a button in there. So what we'll do is, but we already have a button in there, right? It's like a retry or it's like rematch, and the other one is exit. So here, what we'll do, we'll create one more private transform rematch indicator, indicator object. Now we also need something to happen when we press on the rematch button or the replay button. Uh, I think we already have something regarding that button somewhere, right? So let's see. I'm going to collapse everything just to see if we have a button for that. I believe we called every button click on something. Oh yeah, here. So that's the on reset button. Instead of being on reset, I'm going to rename that to on rematch actually. So on rematch button, do know that by renaming a button like that, uh, what happens is we are going to clear the reference, unfortunately. So we're going to have to do something about that in just a bit. But all of these, huh, all of these will have to be moved somewhere else. So here, what, here's what I'll do. I'll do a public void game reset. And I'll just take the whole content of that and just move it to the on game reset. You probably didn't see what I just done, but I hold alt and I just move one line at a time. Um, and since it's too big, we, you didn't see, but I moved everything from on rematch to game reset. So with this in mind, um, we're gonna be using the same exact way um, that we toggled on who's won, basically. So victory screen has a transform inside of it. Zero means that the, uh, the the white team has won, and one here would mean that the black team has won. We're going to do the exact same thing here, but with the rematch indicator instead. So I'll just do this code before we actually do the UI, since I know I'll need it. And once once we reset, reset everything, we're just going to set everything on false. So both child zero and child one will be set on false. Now, going inside of our rematch button, we're going to say net rematch. So net rematch RM is going to be equal to a new net rematch. So we're creating a new message. And then we're going to say, hey, our team ID is the current team. And also, do I want the rematch? If I press on the rematch button, I do. Therefore, the byte is going to be equal to one. And then we're going to send that message over. So send, oh, sorry, instance send to server with the rematch thing. Um, one problem that comes with this is that if we are a local game, we want to have a rematch button, like we want to jump into a rematch right away. So we're going we're gonna to have to wrap this up inside of a condition here. If we are a local game, do something else, do what we just defined. And what do we do when we are a local game? Well, we're actually just going to take both of these messages, well, just one of these messages and copy twice. And I'll say, white rematch and that's the black rematch and I'll just send both messages. It's a quick way to do things. Um, team ID is going to be equal to zero. Yes, I want a rematch. Yes, let's send this message. And black rematch will be the same. So he's going to be team one and yes, he's going to want a rematch. And that's all I do here. So it's a simple way to do things. We're just going to simulate. Well, we're not going to simulate. We're going to send these two messages back to us 
And at this point, we'll see, hey, look, uh, the white team wants a rematch and the black team wants a rematch. So let's just go ahead and launch the game. Now, this is cool, but only if you want to have a rematch. If you don't want to have a rematch, I'm going to copy this code over inside of the on exit button, which should we leave it on exit? We should call it something like on menu because we no longer quit. So on menu button. And instead of quitting, we're going to create a new message. The only difference here is that we do not want a rematch. So we're going to say zero, which will mean, yeah, we don't want a rematch. And then we're going to exit by doing a game reset initially, and then go inside. Uh, we have to create something in the game UI that's going to put us back to where we were before and also reset some values. So reset some values. The player count now becomes minus one and also the current team now becomes minus one as well. Um, and here I'll do a game UI instance on leave from game menu, I guess that could do it. And now we're gonna, we're gonna go inside of this instance, this game UI instance, and we're gonna make sure we plug in this button. Now we've made a little section for every single screen we had. The only screen we didn't have was the online menu, the, the game menu actually. So I'll create it down here. And when we go back to the menu, because before we were just quitting, but when we go back to the menu, we have to change the camera, put it back on the menu. Uh, we are going to change the animator as well. So game animator or menu animator, sorry. Uh, set trigger to, what was the trigger to go back to the menu actually? We can find it here. So start menu, right? So we're going to do that. We are going to shut down the client and shut down the server as well. Maybe we could have done that from the other, maybe it would have been better to do that actually from the other side. So what I'm going to go back here. When we press on menu button, we're going to do client instance shutdown and server instance shutdown. Uh, both way would have worked. I, for some reason, I like it a little bit better here because this feels like more of an exit and this feels like, hey, uh, we just left. Go ahead and, and change the UI, put it back in the state. That, that makes sense for this very specific state of the game. And now I think we're good in regard of sending those message. It is finally time to receive them. And I think that that's actually the last message we'll need to do for the whole tutorial. So uh, small pat on the back, you could say, and uh, let's go ahead and add it to the register event. So under my net utility s rematch. So when the server receive a rematch request, we're going to say on rematch server. And since we're here, let's go ahead and make it um, make it client side as well, because that's going to be where it matters the most. Again, I believe this on rematch button will only be used to be relayed back. So the information will come in and then it have it has to leave. Since we're here, let's go ahead and add that as well to the unregister event. Yep. We're going to head down to the small server section over here, copy one of these, paste it and name this on rematch server. We received the, the, the server and we just uh, we want to broadcast that back basically. So I'm just going to leave this right here. And that's all for the on rematch server. Now where it matters is on the rematch client. So I'll copy that just to have the signature. Basically, that's why I copy it. Close this off. This is the on rematch client. I'm going to kill everything in there change the message type to net rematch because we need the information inside of it. We are then going to need to keep the information of who wants a rematch. So I just go back at the top really quickly and find my multiplayer logic here. I'll create a Boolean array actually. And I'll call it player rematch and uh, create it right here. So it's going to be a new Boolean array of size two. Then going back to my code, I will say player rematch at the index rm.teamid is going to be equal to uh, want a rematch. If want a rematch is equal to one, then it's going to be true. 
And if it's not equal to one, so if it's anything but one, such as zero in this case, uh, then this is gonna be false. So player rematch is gonna be true and false. And then, um, so I'm just gonna comment this one up here. We're gonna say received connection message, set the Boolean for rematch. And then we're gonna do activate a piece of UI. And then finally, if both player wants a rematch, we're gonna do something. So the, cert the third section here will have to do with um, if we receive the message from the other player. So if our team ID is not equal to the current team, so it's from the other person, we're going to toggle on the rematch indicator by doing transform get child. And then whether or not um, he wants a rematch, we're going to be activating one, one of the two transform that we had. So rm dot wants rematch if that is equal to true we're going to activate the first child else we are going to activate the second child and to do so game object set active true okay that should work now if both team want to rematch so if player rematch at the index zero and player rematch at the index one we're going to go ahead and do a game reset Technically, I believe everything should work here. We do, however, have to change the uh, the player rematch at another place when we reset the game. And I'm thinking, hmm, we could do that inside of the game reset. Yes. So let's go under the game reset. And where we clean up our field should be, well, it's actually right here. When we do our field reset, we're going to say player rematch at the index zero is going to be equal to player rematch at the index one. And both of them are going to be equal to false. That sounds actually good. It's a lot of code that we haven't tested out and we haven't done the UI part. So I'm really hoping everything works else. We're going to go inside of a small debugging session, um, but I'm very confident right now. So going on my code, I have to go under the victory screen. I'm going to toggle it on for the moment. Um, and on this victory screen, I will add a new object. I just want to see how I've done it in the other project real quick. Yeah, I'm going to be adding a new object called rematch indicator. So when you empty game object rematch indicator, my size will be roughly 100 and height of zero. It doesn't matter actually where it is. I just remember. Um, and then I'll just drag this beneath the white victory and the black victory. So inside of here, what I'll do is I will create two new text field. So create UI text mesh pro that's going to be accepted the rematch and left for the accepted message we're going to say something like opponents wants a rematch um, the font size is going to be good I'm going to put the green color so it looks like hey you know you want a rematch let's go the width is going to be 1000 I just it just needs to be a big enough basically um, and center this in the center of course I think we're pretty much good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this, the text mesh pro, copy and paste it on the left. Oh, it's already added to game object. Okay, so it doesn't work. Um, I'm just going to have to redo what I've done a second ago. We can disable this message for the moment. Put the width of 1000, height of 36, center this, and say opponent has left. Put that in red. So our setup right here is both of these should be inactive, but the rematch indicator should be active. And this one, um, we're just gonna toggle something in in there. We could also increment the uh, the height because it does look a little bit too close in this case. And I want to see what happens if. Oh, we could increment the height of the rematch indicator actually. Yeah, so something like that will work. Let's make sure to disable both of these messages and to finally add it to the rematch indicator, which should be under the chessboard actually. Yeah, so under the chessboard, add the rematch indicator. Finally, disable the victory screen. And let's give this a try and uh, wish for the best. I gotta say I'm pretty confident, but we've done a lot of code. So I'm starting to be a little bit less confident that it's gonna all work at once, but hey, Let's host, let's connect to our game, and what do we have? 
everything seems to be good. Let's do a um, a false mate. So I believe it's like this, and then I gotta unlock the queen and do something like that. All right, so we've got that. That's a good start. Now let's press on one of the button. Hit reset. Nothing work. Crap. Why is that? Oh, we didn't re we didn't re-enable the button. I'm so sorry about that. I forgot to since since I've mentioned it too. So um, when we rename the function, we break references. So what happened over here is that I got the uh, I got no reference on my button. So if I go back to my victory screen, I'm going to enable it as I see it. Um, and these two buttons right here, reset and exit. First, let's actually change the name of these, right? So this should be a rematch button, and this should be a menu button. Going inside of it. Change the text as well. So that's rematch. That's menu. And now we have to hook these up properly. So if we scroll to the menu part, we should be seeing missing reference. So here it is. Instead of missing reference, we're going to find this is the menu. So on menu button and the rematch is on rematch button, of course. All right, I'm going to go grab a cup of water while this builds. Wait, 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 no, 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 <laughs> just like, I forgot, um, we have to disable this thing quick, victory screen. You can see I'm getting excited, it's almost over. Um, yeah, so here we go. Now I'm gonna go grab water. Opponent wants a rematch, looking good. Click. And then we're inside of a rematch. Did we mess up anything here? No, I can't control that. That's good. Let's do it again, but this time leave. Ah, the leaving part didn't work. That's annoying. All right, so I found the culprit and the person who messed this all up is this following line right here. So. Uh, client instance that shut down. What would happen is that we would shut down on the same frame as we would send the message and therefore um, The message is not being sent. It's not it's being put in the queue But it's not being sent on the next frame. So instead we are going to invoke this uh, In in a couple of well on the next frame if possible um, And to do so I'll have a function down here and I'll create it I'll call it shutdown in X and I'll say float second and call client dot actually no we don't use the parameter here so just shut down relay for both the server and then the client so instance shutdown and same here for server and by having this I'll go back at the top remove the actual parameter I don't need that I just realized um, when you do an invoke you can actually just say invoke and then the name of that function, so in this case, shutdown relay, and the amount of time would be, let's just be safe and put a full second in there, see if that works. And I'm gonna give this a try once more. So another thing we could have done instead of doing an invoke would be to use a um, enumerator and do it on next frame. So there would be a yell return, wait for next frame, that could also work. So let me give this a try, king is here, queen is there, there we go, and checkmate. Opponent has left, and then if we hit rematch, something should happen. If we hit menu, uh, nothing happens. Hmm. Maybe we want to disable this button. That could be a little bit more smart. One thing that I know is a problem, and I realized this a little bit earlier, is that when you go under online game and you host, then you go back and you host again, the game will start because we never actually reset the assigned player, and we can see it here. Um, in the console, if I am to just go down here and uh, play not in maximize mode. Online game host, you see that we're being assigned team zero. As we go back, we don't reset that number. So if we hit host again, we get team one. And that is one of the big problems that we have. So what I thought about doing is when we select our mode, when we say local game is equal to something, uh, I am going to reset things there as well. So set local game, on set local game, here it is. Instead of just saying local game is equal to true or false, I'm also going to say player count is going to be equal to minus one. And also current team, current 
team is going to be equal to minus one. So we're fixing the latest problem that I've just, uh, I just mentioned. And finally, the last thing that would be need to do would be to hide the rematch button in case the other person want, doesn't want to, um, to rematch. So I'll open this one up. If it's not our team, and if rematch wants rematch is equal equal to zero, so it does not want rematch, or actually let's do is not equal to one, then um, we could target the rematch button. So I'd be, I'd be down to have a reference for that at the very top. So let's see, we have a rematch indicator here. Let's do rematch button. And let's make sure it's also type of button. Why? So I can actually have the reference uh, to the object directly. And inside of that reference, there would be a disabled option. So you can have buttons in Unity that are disabled, I believe. Uh, I just don't know how it is being called right here. So enabled, I, is that this one? Enabled behavior are updated, disabled behavior are not. That's not the one I want. So what I am referring to, if we go under the victory screen, the rematch, um, and I toggle this on, what I'm referring to is uh, interactable. So this one, right? So this is what I want to go to toggle on and off. I'll leave it on on by default. And since I am here, I'm also going to be assigning the reference. So under my chessboard, rematch button goes in there. We can then disable the victory screen altogether. Go back in our code and say not enabled, interactable is equal to false. And to make sure we don't mess up anything, when once we reset the game, we're gonna make sure to enable it back. So game reset. Oh, here it is, okay. Um, in the UI, I'm gonna say rematch button is equal to true. There we go. So much better than what I had in my previous version. Well, let me go ahead and build that. And I'm really excited because if we manage to get this one working on this try, we are done. We are finally done. Such a relief, actually. So let's give it a try. Online game, online game. Yep. Let's join here, join that. And we are the black team here. Nothing happens, right? That's totally fine. As the white team, I'm going to do something stupid. And there it is. So the black team wins. And I do not want a rematch. Opponent has left. The rematch button is grayed out. Amazing. Okay. Let's host the game. Back. Host it again. Not any more problem. This is great. Let's just mess up with everything. Values. Try to connect. Uh, go back. Online game. Hosting. Back again. Online game. Now this one hosts. Connect. And we're clean. That's good. All right. Amazing. Got my arms up in the air. It's time to, uh, to celebrate. We've done it. We have a multiplayer game for chess. Great. Are we done? Well, yes, we're mostly done. There is things, however, I'd like to do to improve this project in the future. And that will come whenever I'm ready. I'm not trying to rush this one out. Um, but we've got the basic mechanic in there. I do want to make a video um, showing you how to put that online and I will do it not only for member for everybody. So I'll do that very, very soon. But then after that, I want to go ahead and make a chess notation. So whenever there is a move being done, we want to be able to write it on the left hand side over here and say, hey, this has been the move that has been done. Eventually, if we have, uh, if the project goes well and you guys want to see it more in the comment section below, if you want me to improve it even more, what I'd like to do is um, here, when we start the game, we can select a specific layout. So for example, if we want to start with in the middle of a game with a specific layout that uh, has been seen in chess tournament and you're trying to figure out what you can do from there and practice from a certain position that is not the starting position, it's also something that uh, I would be willing to do. You just have to communicate me some sort of, hey, I want this, right? And if you say that, I'm probably gonna do it. It's as simple as that. So I'm really happy we've made it this far and we have a very nice product. So I'm hoping you guys enjoy. Multiplayer for this game was quite simple. As you can see, we have five messages, six messages. Okay, no, five messages. Um, and they're very simple. I hope you guys take this information, take this knowledge and make something cool out of it. I am done ranting. Thank you so much for watching this long and I really appreciate you. That's all. Thank you. Goodbye.